name is Caitlin McGuire, and I am a graduate student in integrative biology and the Museum of Paleontology here at UC Berkeley. Well, every year the graduate students from UCMP go on a field trip, which is a week long and it's during our spring break. So last year we went up to Oregon to John Day Fossil Beds. I kind of knew I wanted to go up there in the first place because the amount of rock exposed there in the fossil record is like none other. And so to do the type of work I wanted to do, this was an ideal spot. So I sort of pushed the other students to go up there for a spring break. There was about 10 of us that went up there, and we toured around the John Day fossil beds. We were led by Ted Fremd, who is the paleontologist on staff there. For me, I love rocks, <laughs> so to just, to just go there and see this beautiful scenery with just amazing rock faces and walls and beautiful colors, the sediments are all different colors, and just to see the wealth of fossil material coming out of there. It's a very dry area, so you can really see the rocks are exposed there, which is ideal for paleontologists. And once I was there, I really decided this is where I wanted to do my dissertation. Well, my main research question is looking at the ranges or distributions of rodents and how those change through time in relation to climate change and also in relation to their evolutionary history. And so the John Day fossil beds are great because it's 40 million years of rock record in which we have good fossils, we have great climatic data coming out of, and so essentially I can use it to really understand the distribution of rodents in a very detailed manner, which is sometimes difficult to get from the fossil record. Well, there's lots of rodents from the John Day area. Um, there's gophers, there's lots of beavers. I'll probably be looking more at um, mice and specifically I'd like to use niche modeling to reconstruct the ranges of these rodents which requires me to pull detailed climate data out of the rock. What I'm planning on doing is looking at what we call paleosols which are fossilized soils and they have lots of clues in them that help us um, determine what the rainfall temperature was basically looking at certain layers within the soil and pulling out isotopic values from them. The ultimate goal of my research is to see how mammals' ranges shift through time in relation to climate change, and I think this is an important question to look at in regards to the current climate change going on. And so um, when we start to make legislation and get these ideas of where we're going to preserve um, parks and where we're going to preserve land um, for mammals, we need to look in the fossil record and see what's happened in the past and how these animals have reacted to climate change in the past. And so sort of use that as a guide to, um, to the future. There's a, a really unique tie, I think, between the UCMP and John Day. Um, first, John C. Merriam, who's one of the founders of the UCMP, um, started going up to John Day in 1899 and did almost 20 years of field work up there. And so a lot of the UCMP um, collections have, have John Day material in it. And what's unique about John C. Merriam's work up there is he was one of the first people to say, this should be a park or we should preserve this area. And um, it wasn't done till many, many decades later, but he saw the potential for it being a park. There are definitely spots um, in John Day that you can get out of your car, take a short hike, and see fossil beds. Um, my recommendation is to always go to the visitor center and say, this is what I want to see. And they'll point you to areas where you can see fossils readily. It's always important, though, to not go into areas you're unsure about um, because there are strict laws about collecting fossils and so you just want to make sure that you're not overstepping your your limit there. Um, but it, for instance in the John Day fossil beds you can take it's maybe a mile hike and see um, the Hancock tree which is this large fossilized tree in upright position and then the trail continues on and you can see um, fossilized nuts and leaves and plant material um, and so that's an easy hike to do. People are kind of surprised that they can walk outside and see a fossil, but they're there. From the University of California Museum of Paleontology, this is Caitlin McGuire.